Welcome to Driving to the Res with Anelia and, and Larry. Larry. And we actually are driving to the res. We are driving to the res today. We've been driving to the res every day. Every day, but we've been too busy to talk. I know we have. Plus, there was like lots of noises in the car because we had stuff we were carrying back and forth. Yeah, and then we also got distracted listening to our own favorite podcasts. Yeah, we do have favorite podcasts. That is true. We found one that we're not exactly fond of. And we thought, stop listening to that one. Yeah, we're not going to record that one anymore. No, we're not going to be listening to that one no more. What would you like to talk about today on our drive to the rest, Larry? Well, I would like to talk about the effects of the sigil. They have been quite... Amazing. Quite amazing. If you're not familiar, what, what we're talking about is the sigil that I created and released a couple of weeks back now. Um, or something. I wanted to raise my hand. Mm-hmm. I was there. <laughs> I facilitated the machinery. Yes, yes, that is true. So I want to created... get some partial credit here. <laughs> okay, so Larry and I created the sigil. <laughs> Because it's all about Larry, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. So, yeah, credit where it's Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So, it was Larry a and I created a sigil. It was a niggle that you had that I helped facilitate. You did facilitate it, yes. you're right. That's all the credit I want. Okay, yes. With Larry's facilitation, I created a sigil. Now I feel better. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And the sigil is about lifting the veil of forgetfulness from the human collective, basically. But only Spec- those individuals... Yeah, specifically, right. Only those individuals who were born to raise the frequency of the planet. In other words, light workers, people who are very high frequency, and they were born to bring this planet and this species on this planet a few notches up in frequency so that the experience here is one of light, right? Mm -hmm. And stepping away from the light-dark paradigm where both are fighting each other, right? So, and there's agreements, you know, in the light-dark paradigm there's agreements for things such as war, torture, Nasty things have doing being done to nasty people yeah, and nasty push, people. Pull, pushes, yeah, and pushes also, are low frequency. Pushes. Yeah, like and lots of people willing to have experiences of victimhood because they have erroneous beliefs, thinking that it's going to teach them lessons and stuff. But there's my righteousness coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, apart Speaking from all that, that, apart from all that, the sigil uh, yes. is directed at individuals who choose to do it for themselves. And it's very specific to affecting the individuals who came here to raise a vibrational frequency of the planet. And it's not forever, so the person has a choice to say, hey, I have a moment of lucidity and I can, I, I understand and I see why I'm here, what we need to do, what the world's about, what reality is about. Right. And now I'm going to keep that lucidity forever. Or they can choose to say, "Ham, you know what, I've changed my mind. This nasty stuff is awesome. It's kind of entertaining and cool and whatever, and I'm going to bring the veil back. So it does not violate free will on anyone. Only individuals who came here to do that are affected by it. And we have been seeing a lot of actual real-world results Particularly with the people, obviously, that we have, we come into contact with and they have been using the sigil every day. They have been reporting that they've been getting memories back and uh, we talked a little bit about this, I think, in a previous I don't podcast. know if we talked about it other than in between ourselves. Maybe we have. Maybe we did, maybe we didn't. But I thought that would be interesting <laughs> to talk about <laughs> when you talk about the sigil. <laughs> it's a 50-50 chance we remember what we did with mm-hmm. it. Yes, because it's a sigil that it's like um, dissolving a veil, right? So what's important is that individuals are more clear in their heads, there's less fogginess, there's more understanding, there's more the capacity to retain information and data is greater. To recall to what recall. they've heard before and the difference between that and the current hearing. Yes. Which oftentimes I found in people 
they'll only hear what they think they needed to hear or wanted to hear. They won't actually hear the words. They just hear an affirmation of what they already think they know. Right. That is very, very, very common. And now we've seen that that's not so much anymore, that people it's actually like hear It's like dissolved. They hear and they say, wait a minute, that's completely different than what you used to say. And you say, no, no that's actually that's saying. exactly what I've always said every time. Yeah, and there have been people who have gone back and listened, right? <laughs> it's like, uh-oh, uh-uh. totally and right. And they go, oh my gosh, You're totally how right. did I not hear that? How did I hear this other thing? Yeah. So, very, very, very clear effects on the people that we know. At a social, global level, we have per- been perceiving more and more individuals who are realizing that this whole coronavirus scare is not what it's being marketed to be, right. but it's more like a one of those, what are those called when they create a crisis and then they offer the solution? Oh, it's called a normal manipulation technique of a population to get them to go where you want them to go. You put them in fear, scare them, put them in hopelessness, even lower frequency, and then offer a solution that's which, the one you want them to do that was, they wouldn't have done otherwise. No, because he wasn't. It wasn't good, <laughs> no. but, but so, it looks real good when you're in desperation, right? Yeah, when you want to get out of desperation, when you're starving to death, and you might lose your home, or you lose your job, or you lose your support, or you lose your family, or your your grandma, grandpas, or your moms, or you know other members of your family. You want to get out of that and back to the way things were, because the way things were might have seemed bad, but now that seems like the best thing in the world. I just want it like it was. So in order to get it like it was, all you got to do is this, and then there you go. So go do this. Whatever that this is, it could be getting a shot. It could be who knows what. That's the solution and that a population would be directed to do. What's been surprising is that we've seen like hundreds of thousands of people, even probably millions of people, maybe billions of people out there, who are saying, eh, no, no, I don't think so. I don't actually believe this one, right? And that was shocking and surprising to me. It was a really great surprise to me that people, so many people out there, are their veil is being lifted from their eyes, right? Basically, right. Mm-hmm. You can tell you're being conned. There's still plenty who don't have that. And you right. under, you got to understand that they came, those are the ones that... Last time we tried to have this split, they said, no, you're blowing my free will. Mm-hmm. I want to have this experience. Right. So you might think, oh, yeah, so it's only going, you know, in any of things that she uh, created a sigil with Larry's facilitation. And that, that created a change in the entire planet. Yeah, right. You know, she's taking all the credit and blah, 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 blah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't see myself as any different from the human collective, and I don't see you as any different from the human collective, and we all bring our gifts and skills and abilities, and I made it extremely clear in 2010 that my role here on this planet was to bring the message of empowerment to raise the vibrational frequency of the planet. I started with the vibrational. Just raise the vibration of the, vibration planet, of the planet because that because was that's nonsense. what was necessary right at the time. What that's what was necessary. And in 2011, when the human collective decided to split, yep. it changed to the vibrational frequency because I chose the light side, like all of you have too. So, so understand that raising the vibration meant the dark the volume, and the light exactly. were all louder, amplified. Louder. So yeah. that makes it more visible, right? Right. Because in my opinion, at the time, I thought. When everything becomes really, really loud, people will see that the dark games are so nasty and not resonant, because they're not invisible anymore, you can see them, that they're going to obviously choose to remove them and to stop them, those games, right? Those experiences. But a different thing happened, right? What happened was, yeah, a lot of us did feel that and started waking up and teaching ourselves um, to expand our awareness, but also a lot of people decided, hey, this, you know, dark games are kind of cool, I like them, and I want to keep them. I'm not done with them yet. So that's when the split was decided by the human collective. And so it's not like Inelia did it, it's about us, we did it, 
us, the human collective, did it. I just delivered a message that us, as a human collective, needed in the physical world. And I figured out ways to do it. And I'm 100% sure that other people around the planet have been doing the same thing. In right? their way. Right? In their way. And you maybe have been doing the same thing in your way. But it's all orchestrated, so all the dots can be come together, and then the overall effect is massive. And these sigils are sigils are part of the human collective, and they're very very powerful. And this sigil has spread all over the world. It's all over the world. And if you want to spread it in your neighborhood, with your people, with your families, go ahead. And we're going to put a link here on the. Postcard description. You can also go to my website in eliabenz.com and download the sigil there. It's on the front page. If you scroll down a bit, I think you're going to find it. And um, we put yeah. it on our Weeby Gaia too. Yeah, WeebyGaia.com. Yeah. No, it's on, on the YouTube. YouTube. Weeby okay. Gaia YouTube. Yeah. Right. And it's on my YouTube as well. And on your YouTube. Yeah. So. Oh. It's available. It's available. It's out there. You can share it, expand it, and use it. It's very effective. It works. Oftentimes, interestingly enough, I'll get asked occasionally, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about whatever it is that we happen to be talking about that's maybe a negative thing or maybe a low-frequency thing or maybe a whatever thing? I was like, first thing I'm going to do, some magic. And I'll just share the sigil. I'll share the YouTube, which has the spell with it. The image, and that's enough. They're uh, here to raise the frequency of the planet. If that's why they came here, that'll be the nudge they need to figure it out. And if they're not, it has no, no effect. No effect. On them. They don't even see. They it. don't even notice it. They might play it. They might not. Yeah. Even if they do, it'd just be powerless it's on them. And that's exactly. why it has so much power because exactly. it can't affect them. It can't affect them. So it can't be deleted in the human collective because can't it's be violated. Can't be interfered with. Yeah, free will or anything. It's not. So it's no violation of any. Yeah, and the re reactions and feelings that people have had with the sigil are like quite extreme sometimes. But it's like, oh my gosh, it's like their minds just explode into source energy. You know, <laughs> yeah, totally. they get really happy and they feel it in all their bodies, goosebumps and everything. And other people look at it and become very, very afraid. And then some of those people will process their programs about lifting the veil of forgetfulness and then become more aware, right? Right. My and experience. Fear. Remember, I yeah, held it yeah, at arm's right. length it for a while. Didn't really want to integrate it. integrate it completely because I wanted to maintain a little bit of this surprise, a little bit of this, hold myself back, a little bit of this, don't be... Uh, interested in other things. There were some programs for running hours for sure. And so uh, Anelia noticed it, told me about it. And when I looked, I noticed that, yeah, you're right, down and to the right, around my knee level or to the side is a little tiny image of the sigil. Right at arm's length, just there, but not there. Yeah. So I, I spent a little time with the video. I listened to the magic words. I integrated the whole waking part of it. We're lifting up the veil. And I placed it front and center of my attention field. So everywhere I look, no matter what I do, wherever I am, if I... I don't really have to do anything, but just standing here, I can see it. It's a symbol right in the very front of my field of vision. And everywhere I turn my head, there it is. Sort of an overlay over everything, like a screen. You're looking through a screen. And the sigil is the screen through which I look at everything. So if I am um, walking along, minding my own business, and I notice something over there and I look, there's a sigil in through it. I see it through a sigil everywhere. So it's kind of interesting where you move it to your field, front and center, and everything you see goes through it to keep it active. Yeah, that was amazing. And then you started changing, you know, it's like your attitude towards life and the situation that we're going through and everything just expanded it was more relaxed and easier I think yeah less less getting wound up about things that's for sure you notice it as it's happening you're like ah, I think I'll turn that off I'm done with that yeah and I, I wanted to share um, some of the things that one, specifically 
one of the members at walkwithmenow.com, which is the forum where I hang out, the social group that I like to be with and share with and expand awareness with, um, one of the members there, I'm not going to name her name because I don't have her permission to tell her name, um, but she posted a few of the ways in which she has been pro- like infusing everything with the sigil. One of them was she drew it, she copied it onto a um, plastic sheet that's, um, that has a side that sticks to windows. So she got one of those, glass, right? So she got one of those, traced the sigil onto it, and then put it on the window, and the sun rays would come through. And in her opinion, and her intent was that the sigil then infuses, goes because sun rays are energetically and informationally go both ways. She was sending them to the sun, so that everything the sun touches, sunlight touches, gets infused with the sigil. I That's thought that was marvelous, marvelous, that really fantastic. Awesome. And then she talked about other things that she was doing with it, like infusing water, putting the sigil in, in, a, uh, in water, and then putting that water into the rivers and lakes, like things idea. like that. And there was another two or three, but I might, I just blew my mind, blew my mind. Uh, another. Um, Another person, I think, or maybe it could have been her also, was to um, put that water, water your trees or plants, and then they go into the root system of the planet, right? And that gets spread everywhere. So, be creative, man. I mean, those ideas just blew my mind, and I'm totally going to do those, absolutely. So, we have seen quite a lot of effects. For me personally, I did have a resistance also to integrating the sutra. That call was from the vet in Seattle who um, cleaned her pile after the first operation didn't go so well. Oh, right. Yeah, the second operation, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's really nice. Vet's amazing, man. Vets are amazing. Yeah. Call him to check on her to see how she's doing. Yeah. Speaking of which, she's doing... Fabulous. Last week there was a dip, and I think she was checking out, quite honestly, her energy yeah. and everything. And um, she did something really, really bad, and then she just gave up in life, you know? She got kicked she, out of the pack. Yeah, she felt really bad. She stopped eating. She couldn't open her mouth anymore. She had a, a mandibular inflammation of some sort. Uh, genetically, apparently, it's genetic. Uh, can flare up every now and then and um, yeah it was nature's way of we're going to stop eating and drinking and we're going to die now and her paw got worse and everything but then after like a day or two of that I had a little word with her as I was done with her and looked into her eyes I told her I loved her and that I understood that you know she's a guard dog she's not like a little pet you know and that I accept her the way she is, and we're going to make sure that she has the environment where she can be herself, and we're going to protect people from her and and other animals, and um, be, you know, more diligent in what we actually brought into our lives, which is a guardian dog, right? Just a livestock guardian dog. And they have very specific breed, uh, the breed is very specific, for guarding their flock, right? Right. So she won't let any what she thinks are threats or predators near her flock. And we are her flock, so... <laughs> so... Yeah. Yeah. We, um, watched, we watched a show on this mm-hmm. in Switzerland. They have signs that tell you... Yeah, exactly. Livestock guardian dogs on duty. So this is the way... You, this is what you do, you know? This is how you behave. So, yeah, and... Um, after that, after had that, that little chat, and I told her, okay, you can eat now and everything, she immediately perked up, and she ate all her dinner, and some asked for some more, and that she took her shock, tablets. Yeah. yeah, I was like, from one moment to the next. Right. And she's been, like, bouncy and perky and doing her job. She's been guarding her chickens, and 
like, and she still like hardly can hardly move, you know. <laughs> but that <laughs> no, doesn't stop her. You no, know? and when she feels like she needs to, she goes. She does the guard dog. She does the guard dog. She has no injuries whatsoever, as far as she's, she's concerned. She's concerned, yeah. But yeah, she still got her bandage on, and she still got the stem cells working. Um, and hopefully, we're hoping to have good news tomorrow when we take her to the vet to have her uh, bandage removed and her check, you know, her vet appointment check. check. And to see, hopefully, it's uh, back uh, repairing. I would really like that. I don't want her to lose her leg. So, yeah, it's been quite an adventure. Kind of one of the consequences um, of our brides and grooms contract. Low frequency things aren't really permitted. So, how do you have a high frequency guardian? Mm-hmm. That's exactly. one of the things we're learning. Yeah, and I think one of the ways in which you can have a high frequency guardian is to have very well defined boundaries, boundaries extremely right. well defined boundaries so the guardian knows what the boundaries are and if anything is outside of those then you know and responsibility responsive yeah they can be our responsive. own responsibility our as well. own definitely yes we're the humans we are the ones that bred her yes, and right. you know bred her brought her yeah we bought her even though there were red flags at the time we yeah, still got her mom her. was nuts man their mom was nuts yeah She's dead now. Though. Yeah, she, I think, passed, out, passed away. But yeah, so, you know, it's like one of those things. Um, we signed we're, a contract. We're not impervious. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I mean, we're not omnipotent and able to escape unscathed <laughs> if we <laughs> indulge in low frequency stuff. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So back to the sigil. Our dog is fine. She'll be cared for, fenced, she'll be trained, we understand the nature of her and becoming more and more aware of the nature of her, and that's part of the sigil's work, which is to lift the veil, right? Right. Lift the veil of forgetfulness. Become aware of what you have, what you're doing, and what you're going to do about it. And be responsive about it. And be responsive, right, and responsible. Not reactive. Yeah, so with the sigil, I also had some... Firewalls around it. Right, that's what we're stuck yeah. at. We've got our call. Your, your firewalls around the sigil. I'm going to let a Corvette go by. <laughs> but I want one of those too. A <laughs> Corvette. A Corvette and a 3, 380ZX or whatever it is. 400, <laughs> I don't know what number it is. So, this interesting. The two times that I've tried to yeah. talk about <laughs> my blocks around the sigil, we have been highly distracted. And that's one of the signs of the veil, mm-hmm. that when the information doesn't want to be heard, it gets distracted, right? And then you forget, oh, what was I talking about? Or what were you talking about? And then usually what I do is, if I try to say something and two or three times the same thing, distractions come along, then I stop. I simply change the subject. Because it means that the human collective, or the people around that I'm talking to, or with, I'm not ready for that information, so I just stop. Okay, so we'll write that one down for later. <laughs> well, it's only been twice. Okay, we got so one more go. One more go. Okay. Okay, here goes. So I have had, I had firewalls around integrating the sigil myself, and what I did was to process those firewalls. So what did it come along like? You, a firewall is you, it's comes with a words, word sentences, it's very clear words, and it said, I don't want the veil to lift. That's what the words said in me. Mm. So I found them, okay, where are you in my physical body, uh, my energy body, my mental body, egoic body, and all those, and I found them. Okay, I found them, and then allowed them to exist, and I followed the energy line to see where, where when they were placed there, and... Um, it was my physical body, elemental, and the emotional body. They, um, they were the ones who had placed this power wall because even though at a soul level, at a awareness point level, I'm very capable and able to see past, present, and future. And I can function within life even though those are there. At an emotional, physical level, point of view, it's extremely stressful, right? 
it's like dreading, right? Over dreading, over excitement. And just to stop that dread, the veil became very thick. I in integrated it when I was 14. Before that, I didn't have it. But at 14, I integrated the veil and it was really, really thick and it provided like breathing space and the, all that dread from my physical body and energy body just dropped away, which was very, very pleasant. And um, for years I was trying to figure out what it was that I had agreed to, to put the veil in place and thought, whoa, some nasty ha things must have happened, you know? I remember so, us looking at that. Yeah, so we went back, did some regression therapy, and yeah, sure, sure enough, lots of nasty stuff had happened, but none of that remembrance or awareness lifted the veil, so it wasn't what had put it there in the first place. So I let it rest, I let it stay there for a while, and then it just came back when I was doing that. It was like that firewall worst literally I don't want to know because it's too stressful for my physical and emotional bodies even my mental body will go spinning you know and um, I didn't have any good strong uh, tools at the time to deal with strong emotions or dread or fears and stuff when I was 14 so that I, that's why I implemented the veil obviously now I do and the strongest exercise, of course, is the fear processing exercise. So, the other day in our monthly call for Walk With Me Now, um, one of, was it? No, actually it was the... Book club, I think. Book club. Yeah, it was during the book club. We have a book club at Walk With Me Now, and we have weekly live calls on that on Zoom. They're fabulous, fantastic. <laughs> I would highly recommend to join Walk With Me Now just for the book club, man. Yeah, we try to keep it to the book, but occasionally we get off track a tiny bit. But it's related. Know, but it actually wasn't off track. It was highly related. Um, and they were talking about removing programs because in the latest book that we're reading is the interview with the psychic assassin, and she talks about how she thought she had removed all of the programs, the controlling programs that had been infused in her to control her abilities and skills and all that type of stuff but she realized she hadn't removed them all she was a little bit frustrated so somebody was saying oh well you know uh, removing programs and this and the other and then we started talking about those things right. and um, the lady said well I'm so you know not I can't remember the exact words but it's something like I'm impressed that you don't have any fears right like you have no fear of anything you're not afraid of anything and then Larry said, actually, you know, the, the fear processing exercise came in not because you know, he didn't have fears, right? It was the exact opposite. It was, it was because she had fears that it came through. Do you want to talk about Yeah, they were completely de debilitating to the degree that you're practically unable to continue existing. Right, so it was... Um, Which doesn't seem like what you think... But the reason it came to be was because of that. Right. Because she couldn't move forward. She had to handle it in some fashion. And when she figured out how to handle it, it was like, I'm going to write it down. <laughs> I'm going to write this down and share it. Because it was so effective Powerful. to move from Paralyzing paralyzed, in bed, unable to move, to what she's doing now. Yeah. That's a dramatic change. Yeah. Which isn't to say being paralyzed in bed terror off, terror full with terror is the right way to go about learning how to make a your processing exercise. <laughs> no, you're it, just coincidental. It's coincidental. <laughs> right. But it, and it also is from the fact that I'm always looking under the hood and one of my superpowers is to figure things out and create very easy to use tools to use in life to improve our lives and to raise our frequency. Uh, right. So that's one of my superpowers and it goes hand in hand with the situation I was in. Right. So that's why I observed it, I looked at it, I saw what happened, and then I figured it out, and then I made it into a formula. Because it was looking, observing, and looking under the hood, how does this work, you know? Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, don't think that you have to suffer or have fears and stuff to create beautiful things. You don't. <laughs> you do not. I created lots of other tools that are not related to low frequency energies at all. I completely agree. Mm -hmm. Most of those came as a consequence of processing all that fear. Mm, I wouldn't say that's quite accurate. <laughs> well, subsequent to? After that was um, handled? Well, no, not really, because I had actually used other tools and have been pro uh, creating tools my entire life. Uh, but I hadn't thought about that one because, quite honestly, being afraid or not being afraid didn't actually do anything for me, right? It oh, didn't it's stop always me. there. Yeah, so I grew up and I thought it was normal that you wake up in the morning, the first thing in the morning, and your body is petrified and terrified and it can't move, right? T petrifying fear. It's like a fear so strong that you cannot move. How did that come about? Because of physical abuse from before I even was born, right? Right. That's so true. I was that was my normal. I didn't know there was any different. I thought everybody woke up in that state. Right? So let's I, I suppose we can go into into it and talk about it, what happened. Yeah. That's pretty extreme. Yeah, so my physical body and myself um, have been fought against since I was born, and since many light work that. yeah, since before I was born, and a lot of light beings, light workers, have had that experience, and you know they will translate it in all sorts of ways. Most of them think, oh, this is what made me a good person, but you came in a good person, and that all that has done, all that fear and pain and, and suffering, is disability. You make right. you less, make right? Make you less, less able, less less capable. able, less. Yeah. And much more distracted, and we started this conversation with distraction. Exactly, yeah. So, um, what happened was, before I was born, my mom tried to abort me three times. Um, probably four, <laughs> but the fourth one was light. Um, and uh, it didn't work. So... You still have the scars? I do. I have scars all over my body from it. Um, from the needle that they used to poke the baby inside the womb. So, anyways, and I have, I was born with a, a broken heart, <laughs> a damaged heart. Damaged heart. Yeah. Yes, and liver. Liver shot completely because one of the methods they tried to use was a bath made of vodka. All vodka. And uh, drinking vodka until the person, the mom passes out. So alcohol poisoning to try and abort. So yeah, there was a lot of that, right? And um, and then I was born and I suffered from extreme physical abuse. A bit uh, of neglect, I guess. Neglect as well, as well, like extreme neglect. At age 12, in fact, when we moved to England, the social services took me away from the family because uh, from extreme childhood neglect, right? Extreme neglect, they called it. And they put me in a foster home. So it was really pretty tough, and so from from always since I was born, I would wake up in the morning and my body would be, I couldn't move my body, it was petrified. It was just a fear so intense that I couldn't do anything. And I would wait it out, right? And it's like I would push against it and I was trying to talk to my body, like, we're okay, we're okay, we're okay, you know. Um, but eventually, like, it would take a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes, maybe an hour. And eventually it will subside and I was able to move my body, get up and do life, right? So I thought I was normal. I thought that's what humans did. You wake up petrified and then you push <laughs> it away. yourself. And, yeah, and then you carry on, <laughs> carry right? Carry on with your day. Exactly. Um, but obviously, you know, if you know anything about psychology or whatever, you'll think about post-traumatic stress or trauma, extreme trauma, uh, all these type of things, lots of labels for it. Right. But for me it was normal life. Um, and then in 2006, um, I was, again, I woke up in the morning and I was aware that fear opens up really dark portals, right, of negativity and brings in nasty stuff. I woke up, it was like, I don't know, seven o'clock in the morning. I was in bed, my baby was next to me. And I was in that state, I couldn't move, right? 
So I was like pushing it away as I always did and it was I would have my baby next to me and I saw a portal opening with this nasty nasty creature coming in that feeds on fear. This is what I was able to see but most people don't see those. They feed on fear. And it was coming in and I thought, oh my god, and my baby, blah 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 blah. And I was trying to push, 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 and I couldn't get it to go away faster. And then suddenly I thought, ah, oh, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done fighting this thing. It, all right, fine. Fear, you, you know, like just be, I'm going to be afraid. I'm going to see how much afraid I can be and what happens. I don't care anymore. Just welcome here, fear. You're really welcome here. Just be. Let's see how big this can get. Let's see how big this fear is act, it actually is. And it got as big as the room and the planet. And it went out into the universe. And it was so huge. Huge, huge. And it was getting bigger and bigger. And I was going, whoa, this is a massive, massive fear, man. And I was just letting it, letting it grow and getting bigger and stronger. My physical body freaking out. But I couldn't move anyways. <laughs> and it was like so massive. It got so big and so powerful. And it went poof. And it was gone. And I was like, wait a minute. What just happened? <laughs> Where's the fear? It's gone. And the portal closed instantly and that creature went away. And I was like, whoa, what just happened? So I immediately started taking notes, right? Mm -hmm. And then the next morning I was desperate to go to bed that night because the next <laughs> I wanted to know what, what would happen the next morning. I wanted to try it again. I wanted to do that again because it was so fast that the fear went away, right? Just poofed away. And so I went, finally went to sleep. The next morning I wake up, no fear. Oh, man. And I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's like a whole different planet. Oh, wow. So I turn around and I shake my husband at the time wait, awake and I say, hey, honey, honey. He says, whoa, what? He says, you know when you wake up? He says, yeah. Do you feel fear? <laughs> and he says, what? No, <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, and then it clicked. Omg, this is not what is normal. Right. This is not normal. All right, people wake up and then they have fear. And then later in the day, I contacted my brother, my sister, and other people, and you know, asking them when you wake up, do you feel fear? No, 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 no. Yeah, they were gonna stress sometimes. We're gonna think about the the day. Is that what you mean? No, that's not what I mean. <laughs> So I realized, okay, okay, this is what it is. So I wrote it down, and I started sharing it with people, right? So if you feel afraid, this is what you do. If your fear is paralyzing you, this is what you do. If you make any decisions from a fear place, they're going to go wrong for you. They're going to go wrong really, really badly. Fear, it's the lowest frequency. So I started looking at it, you know, and um, and seeing where, 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 where it fitted into our, our collective and I started seeing all the patterns and why it's so broad and shared everywhere and propagated and fed and, you know, and then, yeah, so the, there was a lot of information and that's why the fear processing exercise is available in my website for free. The whole text is there. You can use it. Um, the first thing that I did during this uh, uh, pandemic crisis, social designed, um, oppression tool for the masses came out was to release the fear processing exercise in my newsletter for everybody to to use right because i know that this is what brings the planet down but yeah i mean the tools that i create expansion of awareness and all these other things they're not related to fear but if something's stopping you because of your fear most definitely is the very basic the very first thing that I teach people to do. First of all, deal with your fears, and then we'll go on and use other things that will help you do other things. Right. You don't want to be carrying your fear into your expanded awareness realms. Nope. 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 No you don't want to do that. I think we're on the res. <gasps> when we're here, we're at the res. Yay! <sighs> well, talk to you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>